For those of you who don't know, this is U.S. Congressman Bob Good. He's one of the finest patriots, one of the finest men that I know. Thank you, Dan. I'm glad that Dan was between me and Vince, but Dan is a hard act to follow as well. I, I do want to say something since he gave me the mic. So, uh, you know, I thought I might run into a lot of politicians and candidates here. A lot of them won't show up to something like a militia. I see Jeff Helgeson. I see Marty. I see also in the back Peter Alexander. Any other elected, Kurt Deemer right here. And I'm sorry, I don't know you, ma'am. Michelle Lee Harvey, right-in candidate for Ward 4. And Justin, back there, our, our supervisor from Campbell. Good to have Justin. Over there. You know, and I'm sorry, shout out, I don't know. Tori Howard, Ward 2. One more time, the name? Tori Howard. Tori Howard, candidate in Ward 2. Okay. You know, it's funny. Why do politicians and elected officials, even in, I'll say, our party, because I'm going to guess that there's probably a lot of skeptical, cynical people here who aren't bound to a party, but I'm going to guess it's about 95, if not 99% where you tend to vote for one party versus another. But why are politicians and uh, elected officials afraid of something like this? Why are they? Because as Dan said, not because that's why they're afraid, but think about the, the, a militia is designed to keep the government in fear of the people. But not just any government for any reason, yes, in a sense, yes. But the famous saying, those, when, when the people fear the government, that's tyranny. When the government fears the people, that's liberty. That is true. So if you are a, an elected official who's operating on a constitutional basis, and you believe that the purpose of your existence is to protect the freedoms of the people, the constitutional liberties of the people, what do you have to fear from an armed population? You should want that armed population, that regulated militia, to help you defend and protect that which you swore an oath to defend and protect. And I'm glad that Dan said it. I was going to say this earlier. We talk a lot about the Second Amendment and what it protects, and we often leave off the first part of that, which is about the regulated militia. The founders intended and desired and supported that we would have this all over the country to ensure that we remain a free people. And you think, well, you might somehow say, well, in America, gosh, why would we need that? This is America. Well, what if the government closed your place of worship? Never seen that happen in the last few years, have you? What if the government seized your property? What if the government seized your, your firearm? What if the government seized your children? What if the government restricted your ability to assemble? That hasn't happened in recent times, has it? Or our freedom to worship, our freedom to travel and move around, our freedom to earn a living... Just look to Canada and look across the ocean and you tell me that an armed population and an organized regulated militia is not necessary to ensure we remain a free people. And anyone who operates in elected office within the boundaries and the limits of the Constitution should celebrate and support that, not fear it. Because it's not just Democrats and the media who criticize and misrepresent what a militia is. It's so-called Republicans who are the real problem, by the way. And I'll just add this, and this is probably a little bit personal, but I'll just add this. Is there not anything that a party can do in a contest that would make them ineligible to demand that you support their candidate? They can do anything. They can nominate someone through any method. Or is there no one that they could nominate that you would say, you know what? Saving the country doesn't mean having the majority for one party. Saving the country is what we do with the power that the people entrust to us for a limited period of time. It's not about having the majority. It's about following the Constitution. Are we, are we pledging to a party? Are we pledging to principle? Are we pledging to morals? Are we pledging to our founding Judeo-Christian values? Are we pledging to the Constitution? Is that what we're pledging to? Or are we pledging to a party? So thank you for allowing me to be your congressman these last four years. Uh, it has been my greatest privilege in my professional life. And uh, it is a privilege to be with you here today. You know, I got contacted by the media. I'm sorry, I'm like way longer than Dan Trump, but I only got three months left, so what can you do to me? But a few weeks ago, I got contacted by CNN, who was doing a hit piece, a nasty hit piece, on a couple of our militia friends in Campbell, which was my home county for about 18 years. 
And so a couple of days later, when I went to do the 9-11 Memorial Stair Challenge, which is brutal, Dan's done that too, I think, but uh, I wore my Campbell Militia hat when I was at that event just to stick it in the eye of the media. It was like, because I said, oh, we saw some pictures of you on a friend of yours Facebook page who's in the Campbell Militia. I said, well, let me just go ahead and wear my hat so you can see it. We don't shy away from that which ensures that we remain a free people and that which is the greatest tool the founders gave us to ensure that those come behind us inherit what we inherited that was bought at great blood and treasure. So with that, let me pray. Lord, we thank you for the privileges we still have in this country. We thank you, Lord, for those who came before us who suffered and died and gave pledged and gave their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honors, so that we could live free. And Lord, we just ask that we would be faithful with what was trusted to us, and that we would do our part to ensure those come behind us live in the kind of America that we grew up in. That we would make it better for those who come behind us, and we wouldn't allow it to be further diminished uh, than it is even today. Thank you for those these patriots who've gathered here today. Lord, I pray that this would just be the start of um, a well-regulated militia right here in Lynchburg, my hometown. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Congressman.